Welcome, my name is Noemi Galara and it's my pleasure as a Director of Alumni Engagement to welcome you to our next edition of our 49er Industry Chat. Before we start our session, we would like to let you know this is being recorded and it will live on demand on our website at csuob.edu forward slash alumni. We also encourage you to use our Q&A box located below to submit any questions uh, you have for our guest speaker today. And now I would like to introduce Ilana Telorin uh, that will serve as your moderator today. Ilana currently works in our Office of Alumni Engagement. Uh, Ilana graduated from the beach, earning her degree in Bachelor's of Music and Performance in 2011. Ilana, thank you so much for moderating the chat today. And now I would like to turn it over to you. Great, thanks so much, Noemi. And uh, I'm really excited to introduce our host for today's 49er Industry Chat. Uh, Aaron Booth Caro, who will be sharing about how to turn your 2021 career goals into action. So Aaron Booth Caro is a proud graduate of Long Beach State, holding a master's degree in science and counseling and student development in higher education. Aaron Booth Caro is the director of the Career Development Center at Cal State Long Beach. She has worked in career services for over 14 years with a focus on career counseling, internship policy and procedures, and the integration of assessment and technology into student affairs. She received her master's of science in counseling and student development in higher education from Cal State Long Beach. And she also received her bachelor of arts in sociology and global studies from UC Santa Barbara. So please uh, join me in welcoming today's industry chat host, Aaron Booth Caro. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Alana, um, and thank you, Noemi, for um, inviting me here today. I'm excited um, to be with you all and really um, an honor to share a little bit about uh, myself as well as um, some information about that will hopefully be helpful to you in, in your career um, journey. Um, and so I can start off by um, expanding a little bit more on my own journey. Um, so as Alana mentioned, I went to... Um, Santa Barbara for my undergraduate degree. I actually grew up locally here in Los Alamitos, um, went over to UC Santa Barbara um, for sociology and global studies, um, had an amazing experience, which included the ability to go study abroad. So I went to um, Spain, as well as later uh, worked abroad um, in South Korea. And I say that because I it was amazing experience that had a huge impact um, on my life. And, um, and then um, I worked um, after, so after graduation, I worked in South Korea teaching English. Um, and then I um, did a little bit of work as well in um, hospitality. So working in um, a bed and breakfast as well as a, a hotel in Santa Barbara. And then also had the opportunity to do some human resources work um, before I began my master's at Cal State Long Beach. Um, and, What's kind of funny with, with my career is when I was at UC Santa Barbara, I actually worked at the Career Development Center and I was an internship um, advisor there as a student, um, which was a really great experience. And my first position after I graduated from Cal State Long Beach with my master's in counseling was in the Career Development Center as an internship coordinator. Um, and so, you know, it kind of repeated itself and it seems very intentional if you were to hear about it, right, and think about my trajectory, but of course it was not that way. <laughs> um, I didn't know and as an undergrad taking that role that there would be any relation to my future career. Um, but I really, um, love working um, on a campus, love working in the field of education. I feel really passionate. I've always liked school and just love learning and consider myself a lifelong learner. And so I feel blessed to be working at Cal State Long Beach um, in an environment that's um, that really um, encourages, right? And has so many opportunities to engage. That's great. Thank you for sharing about your, your experience, Erin. Uh, is it required that you have extensive career experience to work in career services? Yeah, um, so depending on the role, so we have um, counselors, career counselors that typically will have their master's in counseling. Um, 
And so they're meeting individually with students or in class presentations and webinars and events. Um, but then we also have other positions in the Career Center. Um, we have an employer engagement team that work directly with employers looking to hire Cal State Long Beach talent. And so for those positions, you know, the counseling background wouldn't be required. It would still be a benefit, right, that they have that experience. But since they're working with employers directly, it's really not, not needed. So it kind of depends on what your role would be. Um, but for the student facing positions, typically that master's in counseling um, would be required or some type of master's in, in higher education. Mm, gotcha. And uh, you also mentioned uh, working on internship policy. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit and explain what, what that is? Sure, yeah, so my first position as an internship coordinator, um, I had for many years, about six or seven years. So it was, it's really dynamic role. Internships are kind of ever changing and policies around them as well. And so uh, our campus is still, um, you know, even continually meets to redefine, you know, what internships are on campus. That has to do with you know the ability to be able to get credit for internships how integrated are they into curriculum um you know are we um going to provide opportunities for students to be able to do unpaid internships and get credit um of course we promote paid internships and that's a great experience as well but there's a lot of um even legalities around internship. And so we work closely with employers, with our community partners, um, as well as um, with the campus to bring a lot of internship positions. But yeah, the policy you know, has to do with our campus defines how internships happen for our students, um, whether they're paid, unpaid, and how we can um, help to make them available. So currently we're really trying to encourage internships to be available for more students um, and to make them accessible. Um, and sometimes in the past, they've really been hard to do on top of your coursework, maybe a part-time job, um, really hard to manage and unpaid internships, especially. Um, and so we're working to really make more. We have a few scholarships in the Career Development Center around internships that so we're helping to kind of um, make them more accessible for students that aren't able to stop everything to do an unpaid internship. Mm, that sounds great. And uh, we know that the Career Development Center offices offers a lot of services for students. Um, do, do, uh, do they provide services that assist alumni as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so that's actually one of the things I was excited to share today because we've recently changed our um, services for alumni. So we have uh, services for students um, one year after graduation, um, all students have access to all of our services and that's the way it's been. So that's not a change. Um, but what did change is beyond that one year after graduation. At that point in the past, students would have to, alumni would have to uh, register um, and subscribe for our services and there would be a fee as associated with that. Um, and they had a choice if it was mostly online services or if they were gonna do in-person services. Um, and there was different fees depending which package they chose, but we have changed that. So now uh, for our alumni after um, a year of graduation for no charge, they do have to subscribe on our website, uh, but they will have access um, to all of our online tools as well as our uh, events. So our workshops, um, our job fairs, our employer um, information sessions. And so we're opening all that up to um, all alumni. They just need to go to our website to subscribe. And then in regard, coming soon is the career counseling piece. So if, mm -hmm. the, if alumni beyond a year are interested in career counseling, there is a fee associated with that. Um, but that's the only thing now that there will be a fee associated with. And so that's coming soon. Okay, that sounds great. Um, so I understand you have a presentation to share with us. So I'll just give you the floor and you can... Go ahead and share your screen then when you're ready. Okay, great. And just to check, Alana, you see the presentation? Yeah, I see it. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, well, yeah. Um, let's 
see, I think I'm just going to jump right in. So what I thought I would do is just talk a little bit more about um, career goals and really how um, I wanted to frame the conversation around that, around you creating career goals. And I tried to make it very flexible and open no matter where you're at, right? You may be job searching, you may be in, um, you know, in your profession now, but looking for advancement um, or looking for new ways to really be energized and engaged in your work. And so um, my goal today is that this information will apply to everyone. Um, and then I just want to also um, ask that you put questions in the chat. Feel free to type questions any, anywhere within the presentation. Um, and Alana will, um, will share with me so that we can include that as part of our conversation today. Um, all right. So with that, I think I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I wanted to start off with this quote just to kind of get you thinking about, um, about our energy. So when it comes to career, so we grow the aspects of our lives that we feed with energy and engagement and choke off those we deprive of fuel. Your life is what you agree to attend to. So my, my conversation with you today and kind of idea I wanted to share is really around energy. Um, because I think in particular, when I was thinking about this presentation and kind of setting career goals in 2021, um, you know, we cannot ignore the type of life we are living in 2021, right? Which is really, um, of course, heavily impacted by the pandemic. Um, and for me, I feel even more of, um, I'm in a space of gratitude and appreciation of, of every day, you know, that I have um, and, and really what my career means and what I want my life to consist of. And so when thinking about career goals in 2021, I just thought it was important to um, discuss that, right, and be straightforward that really at this time, um, we have a lot on our minds and life is very different than it was um, previous to, to the pandemic. And so um, energy, I think, is really important because we may, we're all struggling in different ways, you know, to kind of thrive in this environment, um, whether um, you've lost a position during the pandemic or an opportunity has been lost. Um, that happened with a lot of employers we worked with, right? They canceled internship programs or canceled their employment goals um, once the pandemic hit. Um, you know, so you could have experienced that or um, even those that are just interested in promotion or advancement or a change in, in your career, right? Some of those opportunities uh, may not be there anymore or they may look different. Um, and then even those of us that are satisfied maybe where we're at now, uh, we're not looking for a position change or promotion, but maybe we just need to engage and feel energized and find new ways to do that. So I think that is a common struggle um, in all three of those scenarios. And so I just thought it's really important to think about um, energy and engagement as we consider our career, what we want out of our day-to-day -day lives and really where we wanna provide the fuel, right? The energy, the enthusiasm to get what we want um, for ourselves. And so I think that's um, an important thing to think about. And as I spoke, um, you know, with others and, and um, just throughout this past really year, um, you know, there there is an appreciation, you know, for those that were able to maintain their positions, you know, really appreciating, you know, knowing that a lot of people are unemployed or are, are, are struggling to find employment. And so there is a different perspective now, even for the jobs that we had uh, and current and, and continue to have. And so so I think gratitude and appreciation is one way, right, that we can kind of energize ourselves um, and focus in on what we want and really try to appreciate um, the positive things that are happening in our day to day. Um, because we also in, in this environment, if you're working virtually and not engaging as much in person, that's the case for us at the university, right? We are not, um, most of us are not on campus. And so we have to find new ways to be energized if we got our energy from our campus setting, from being around students and other staff and faculty and community members. Um, and so really having to, to shift our focus um, to energize ourselves. Um, so I think that's something to think about. Um, and I wanted to, in light of that, 
idea, I wanted to ask you all, even if you're willing to share just a, even a positive moment, a win for you for this week, this month, you know, um, something positive that happened to you. Because I think a lot of times what happens is we get caught in our day to day and we're not even celebrating just small wins, you know, and differentiating one day from the next. Um, and so I think it's important to take a moment to say, you know, what good has happened to me today or this week? Um, and share that. So if you're willing, please type in the chat, you know, anything positive that's happened um, for you. And Alana could, could chime in with, any, with anything that she sees um, there. But I think it's important to celebrate um, those wins. All right, we have some comments in the chat. Um, hearing about this Zoom event and reminded once again why I love the beach. Oh, that's nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And for me too, um, you know, being able to move into this like virtual space and everything and start engaging more alums and students in this way has been a really rewarding part of this uh, career also and working at the beach too. Um, so it's really opened up the doors to a lot of new things. So that's kind of helped energize me personally. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah creating such community amongst um, the beach right and hearing from our alums is really special mm -hmm. great all right anyone else absolutely love this quote by jim lower attended lb for undergrad and grad and felt like i got a private school education that's awesome really great yeah all right. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing. Appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I just want us, right, we want, need to be mindful, right? Where are we putting our energy? Um, so I also thought today that I would share a couple tips or strategies, I guess, in how can you um, feel energized or think about energy in your work and your career. And so one idea um, that I've done and read about too in, in Designing Your Life, which is another um, book really about how to live a joyful life, is this idea of creating a daily log. So Sometimes when we think of the tasks we do with our job or the, or the job we want or the job we have, um, it can be a struggle to really um, analyze our day. We don't spend time analyzing our day. We're so busy moving from one task to the next that we're not always thinking about what did I really enjoy today or what went really well and what were areas where maybe it really zapped my energy. You know, after that I was exhausted, you know, because it took a lot out of me to do that. Um, and so this daily log of energy is really where you write your daily log. Okay, what are the things that, that you did that day? And then you can write next to it, have a column that's really high, medium, or low in regard to energy. So what was your energy like when you were doing that activity? Um, and this can help you with future decision making, right, as you're thinking about the more energy, the better, right? The more energy you have throughout your day, uh, throughout your weeks, throughout your months, the more you're gonna be able to bring to your career um, and accomplish what you wanna accomplish and feel great about what you're doing. Um, but we want to be mindful, right, about what these things are and also be mindful of the areas that we know we don't get energy from. Um, we may not be able to discontinue that work, right? There is work we have to do that we're not going to get energy from and that's okay. Um, but we still want to be aware, you know, of what are the tasks that, that don't bring me energy or, or kind of drain my energy versus those that really um, and, engage me and enliven and, and, and bring energy to my day. And that way you can create balance, right, in your day. Day, um, and make sure that you really uh, walk walk away each day having having had those high points too, where your energy is really high. Um, another component you can add to this log as well, which he talks about um, in this book, is your. Um, not only your energy, but your engagement. So when is it that you're really, and they call it in flow, but like you're so focused on your work that you lose sense of time because you're really just enjoying what you're doing. You're in the flow, they call it. Um, and so not only is it energy, but also where your engagement is. Um, with your work that um, are, are ways that really enliven your day. Um, and so again, this is just so important because if, 
we notice there's more areas that we're not energized or not engaged in our day. It's going to be more of a struggle to get to. And we know time is, is finite, right? There's a, only a set amount of hours in the day and how, it, you know, that's never going to change. Um, and the point of kind of all this too, is that you don't, um, overdo it by just working longer and longer and longer, but that you focus on energy so that you're more capable of doing the tasks that are ahead of you because you have the energy to do them. Because we've all been there, right? When you're kind of stuck and you're just done, but you can't, you can't end your day because you have to get X, Y, and Z done. Um, and so really, if we focus on bringing energy into our lives, we'll have the energy to get through those things where hopefully our days um, at work will not keep extending, but that when we bring ourselves, we're fully engaged and full of energy to get what we need to get done. Um, so again, one way to do that is to do this kind of daily log. Um, and I actually did it for about three weeks. So you do it for a long period of time, right? Not just a couple days. You want to really get a scope of your work, maybe two, three weeks to really see where is that energy coming from? What are those things I'm doing um, when I'm really engaged? Um, and then this is really a jumping point to start brainstorming more, right? If you're looking for change, this is a jumping point to figure out, okay, where, um, what other opportunities will include this type of work, this type of engagement for myself so that you can really um, be energized and enjoy what you're doing. So that's, that's one thing, right? And it looks different for everyone. Some people like doing very analytical work. Others want to be a, around people all the time and engaging, um, you know, problem solving, supporting someone. Maybe you're very creative and it's about writing or creating something. So it's, it's going to look different for everyone. But really knowing who you are on that level is going to help you make good career decisions. And what you can do from that, and I love doing mind maps because they're just, it's, it's really great. So you would set a certain amount of time. So you, let's say you've done, and you can do these things together or separately. You can mind map without that journal if that journal isn't, isn't the right thing for you. Um, but you can also do these in a sequence. Um, and so once you have that journal, you're going to get ideas there about what you like doing. With a mind map, you're going to get a big blank piece of paper. You're going to set yourself a timer. So maybe it's just going to be four minutes. It doesn't have to be long. You're going to set a, a certain amount of time and you're going to have your pens, your markers, whatever you need. Um, and you're just going to generate ideas around that concept. So if it is the um, analytical piece or a problem solving or a certain project that you really got energy from that you noted, right, you can put that at the middle of this mind map. And the idea with the mind map is not to think too hard, not to cancel out ideas and be critical about what's on the page. It's to throw everything out on this page. Um, the less you think about it, the better. And to move fast, and that's why you would time yourself because you could also get stuck doing this forever and then overanalyzing. The idea is to go fast and not to overanalyze and to generate ideas for yourself. So if you're feeling stuck, you don't know what's next or where to go or how to find energy in your work. These are ways that you can begin to brainstorm and come up with ideas. Um, if you're in the job search right now and maybe you're looking at two or three different types of jobs or careers for yourself, you can mind map around those. It could be a mind map about your job search. So in the middle is kind of the goal. It could be the type of job you want. And then all around it, you can mind map what, what's going well in your job search. What else can you be doing, right? And have different ideas about networking and people and, you know, what other ways to find employment in that area. Um, conferences, you know, so you just go on and on and you kind of just throw out things that are going to help you with your job search. So this is just a, a great way to brainstorm. Um, I, I love, you know, doing ideation. And so this is just kind of a fun thing to do that to help you think of um, challenges you're facing and your career in new ways. So this is um, another tool that I wanted to share with you guys. And then I wanted to um, talk um, back to the energy piece of it, right? That even if we're not going to change something or it's not possible, right, at the moment to change where we're at or we don't want to, or where we're at with our career, um, still I think this idea of energy is really important. So energy can be systematically expanded and regular, regularly renewed by estab establishing specific rituals. Um, and so this is also the piece of outside of your work, what are you doing in your day-to-day -to, -day to keep yourself energized? 
Um, and again, just with, with where we're at with this pandemic, I think this is so important um, to do all the time, but especially now it comes to mind a lot. Um, and so what rituals do you have? And again, if you have things that you have in place that have really helped you, please share them in the chat um, and, and kind of shout out what those are. Um, for me, I did not work out every day before pandemic, pre-pandemic. Now I work out every morning, you know, so, and that's really how I start my day. And so that commute time is gone. And instead I replaced it with, you know, whether I'm doing yoga or I'm out on a walk, I'm doing something just to kind of get myself physically moving because I know I'm going to have a long day of sitting at my desk. And that just really helps me get energized. Um, I also read an article about the fake commute. You know, some people are actually just driving around to get into the mindset of starting their day. So they don't have to drive to work anymore, but they are still. They're driving around the block, driving around the neighborhood just to be able to get into that mindset. Um, because we do know that even though commutes are not our favorite, there is something that's happening there in that commute that's helping us. Um, so it could be journaling, you know, it, it looks different for everybody, but building in this, this um, something, a ritual to kind of help you with getting through your day. And if you're in the job search, that's a full-time job, right? We know it takes a full-time job to get a full-time job and, and it's draining and it's exhausting. And so this energy piece is so important um, that you're building in these breaks, other ways to bring energy to your day um, because we know just going online and applying, right? There's so much more to your job search than that, um, but that takes up a lot of time um, and can be very draining. So um, any ideas, Alana, that folks are sharing as far as getting energy? or ideas that you have? Um, well, there are some uh, some questions that are coming in, but um, uh, we can definitely hold them until your presentation's done, but uh, not seeing any ideas from people yet. But um, okay. but yeah, I mean, or, uh, learning something new, someone shared. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's always yeah. good. I get energized by that too. And sometimes it can be um, gratitude is a, a big thing that can bring energy, thanking someone, right? Appreciating others that you're around. Um, even taking a break to, to call a friend, call a family member, right? Just kind of disengaging for a bit to do that. You know, you'll find you'll be more productive if you take the intentional breaks to, to create energy for yourself. Mm. And then we also have uh, having something to look forward to each day. Mm -hmm. uh, walking every morning for an hour before I sit down to work, uh, getting fresh air, breathing, oxygen, yep, yeah. reading and reaching out to family. Yeah, reading. I've been doing a lot of reading as well. Yeah. I hope, yeah, I hope every like self care, you know, has, has come to an all, all more important level, I think, um, during these times. So, um, just really critical in, in our lives and in our careers um, that we make time and again realize what's going to bring us that energy. Mm -hmm. um, all right. And so um, I just wanted to um, kind of close the, these concepts with, with this another, sorry, I can't help myself with these quotes. Um, this is a poem. And so, but it really, um, you know, hopefully there's something we, we, we briefly talked about today that connected with you and, and engaged you. Um, and I wanted to share this quote. So for some reason, we keep telling ourselves that we aren't enough, that we have so far to go, that we'll never reach the supposed level or standard we hold ourselves to. But we forget that every step of the journey is part of the journey. We forget there are going to be rough patches on the road to success, there will be downs to each of our ups and that sometimes we're not gonna be moving at all, but instead standing still. And all of these places are okay because where we are in every moment is where we're supposed to be. Um, and so just hoping that there's some empowerment there in that. And I think, you know, our self-talk can sometimes be full of doubt um, when we're on our journeys um, in our career. And so just want to really instill that, you know, each of us are where we're supposed to be. We're learning every day and growing every day. We're gonna make mistakes, um, but we're gonna get through it. Um, and yeah, and just, um, wanted to close, close with that concept. Um, 
And I think the only other thing I, I wanted to share with you guys today um, is a really great um, partnership and is also tied into um, your career, but is mentorship. Um, and so a mentor can be so valuable, right, through your career journey and not just one, actually several uh, mentors in different areas of your life. And um, here at the beach, if you haven't heard, we have Beach Nexus now, which is a partnership between um, alumni engagement and the Career Center that we're really excited about. But this is a way, as Alana talked about doing these 49er chats is a great way, I think, to continue to build our community. Um, and so is Beach Nexus. So Beach Nexus is our online community. And so it's just an awesome way to stay engaged with alumni from Cal State Long Beach. You can be um, a mentor to students. But you can also be a mentee, you know, if you just want to connect with other alums and ask for advice, right? So depending what whichever road, you can do both at the same time, right? We, we can give um, and take um, at the same time as well. So just wanted to also throw out there mentorship and how powerful that can be in our journeys. And that Beach Nexus is a new great tool we just launched in November that is going to be a great way to keep in touch throughout your career with um with alums from the beach, as well as with current students. Um, and I think, I know in my career, you know, students really empower and engage me in my work every day. And I feel, you know, so blessed to, to hear their stories and their resilience. And I think as a mentor, you would be um, inspired, you know, by, by all they're doing as well. So, and I don't know if Alana, we can share the link to Beach Nexus maybe in the chat too. One step ahead of you, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Anytime there's a chance to share a link to something, I'll, I'll do it. But yeah, you've got the link there for Beach Nexus and you're welcome to join it at any time and see what uh, alums are on there you can connect with. Great. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to um, take questions and kind sure. of just be in, in dialogue uh, more. Sure. Yeah, we, we have quite a few questions in here. Um, I love that last quote that you shared also. I feel like anytime I'm scrolling down on Instagram and I see those little messages that are like where you are is where you're supposed to be. It kind of, it, it like gives you a sigh of relief in a way, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> huh, like it's okay. And, um, and also I find just telling myself that it, there is enough time to do everything. Like I don't have to stress today and rush like there, you know, the time will make itself and, and I'll get everything done, you know? So yeah. that's great. Um, okay, so some questions. Uh, when a career opportunity is lost, what recommendations do you have to re-energize? Does that mean just start applying to new jobs, volunteer, reaffirm the industry I'm in? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good question. But I, I think even in the in the question, you're on the right track, right? That it, it is a great opportunity to kind of reevaluate, you know, where are you at? Um, you know, where are you energized? Is this still the right fit for you um, as far as the industry, the profession, um, the function of the position? Um, and so I think definitely if, if that kind of reevaluation wasn't done, there'd be a loss there, right? So I think it is it's a great opportunity to do that and to reach out to your network, right? And, and continue to engage to hear what's happening as far as new opportunities and growth in your industry and in others. Um, but I think it, it has, it really aligns with this quote, right? And, and kind of that concept that, you know what, everything happens for a reason and what, you know, what is the learning from that? From that? Um, and where, where can we go from here and really turn this into a positive um, and, and start a new journey in your life that you'll be um, just as satisfied with? And, and sometimes you may come under new discoveries, right? And others, you may say, you know what, that this is still the right industry and that's okay too. Um, you don't have to make a change. Um, um, it might have been just that wasn't exactly the right thing at that time. Because um, I also have um, folks that I worked with, they've been um, laid off from a company and then rehired by the same company at a later date. You know, it's like everything, you just don't know what's kind of around the next corner. But I think it's it's a great opportunity for reevaluation, um, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And um, uh, there's a question about the daily logs also. How can a daily log translate for a current student who does not have work experience yet, but is actively looking for an internship? 
Yeah, uh, that's a really great question. Um, and so I think one of the areas um, can be looking at course your classes, right? What type of projects or work within your classes do you find energy from? What's happening when you're energized by that work? Um, and then even if you have a part-time job, you know, any other type of employment or even volunteer work that you do, anything else that you're doing in your life, right? You just want to do a larger stock about what, where am I getting my energy from? Because those things, you'll be able to translate them into work. Um, and some things translate easily. Other things will kind of stay to be hobbies and things outside of work. And that's okay too, but you may need to still find time to build them in to keep that energy going. Um, so I think those are a couple things, the coursework and any other work, volunteerism, kind of outside activities that you do. Um, and then um, we've actually just this... Um, past um, week at Cal State Long Beach did what we called Real World Week. And there's actually organizations, um, one, name, one is named Forage, and the other one is Mind Sumo, where they're actually um, real or, uh, company case studies and projects that you can participate in. Um, with Mind Sumo, the top um, ideas actually get some form of compensation, and you can see that when you go on their site. Um, but you get to test out your skills, your enjoyment of different types of projects. Um, and so that's kind of a cool new way that we've recently discovered and shared with students where you can kind of test out um, areas of work um, even before you enter them and gain experience you can put on your resume. You said Mind Sumo? Yeah, Mind Sumo. What's the you site know? for that? Yeah. And then um, Forage is the other one, F-O-R-A-G-E, I believe. Okay. All right, and then we had some other questions. Um, how did you know this kind of work was for you? What is the reward for you in career services? to say I didn't start off knowing that career services was the place. I knew I wanted to work in higher education. I wanted to work with students. Um, and I also, um, when I first started as well, even my master's, the idea, my um, primary focus was working with um, international students. I was really interested in supporting international students through exchange. And I had done some work in my undergrad that was like that, where I was actually finding job opportunities for college students abroad to come work at the US, in the US. So, and I had told you about my work experience um, abroad in South Korea and my study abroad. So that was really what began this journey in higher ed. Um, and when I worked in career services as an internship coordinator, um, there's a lot of um, rules and processes around how international students can work in the U.S. And so that's what that's what was my first hook, you know, in was I was like, oh, this is fascinating how international students and people, all these, you know, um, policies and rules and regulations about how they can engage and work in the U.S. And I really believed in also the ideas they're able to bring with them from other countries about how, how things are done and how we can learn from each other. So that's a roundabout answer, but that's how I got started. And then, and so with that, I think then that just really emerged and blossomed, of course, um, with just realizing, I mean, these are lifelong skills, right, in career development. This is not something you just do in college and then you're done, you know, of course. So um, I just think it's so important to take the time to evaluate um, your career decisions and explore the world of work with has endless opportunity. Um, and so I'm just um, constantly um, engaged and, and amazed by, by so much opportunity and, and to hear others stories of their work and how they got where they are um, in their life and their journey. And so it's just something that I find so fascinating um, and love to work with students and exploring their options and, and thinking about themselves. Um, 
because I think there's such a huge reflection piece. You have to really know yourself well to know what's a good career fit for you. Um, and there's so many areas to explore. So I just find it so exciting. I can't help myself. <laughs> Um, so we have another question. Uh, any virtual job clubs in local um, areas you can recommend? Those by EDD have closed. Others are restricted by eligibility enrollment and others focus on lectures instead of conversations. Mm. Besides uh, individual therapy, what other free support groups exist for those job searching? Hmm. You know what, that's a really good question. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't, I don't think I know any off the top. Um, I know we have a career transition center in Long Beach, but I don't know that they're doing a job club type format. Um, but I really appreciate that question and that idea, you know, just where can, where can that support be garnered? I mean, the only thing else I can think of is more um, networking groups, um, you know, um, that might be around people's identities. I've been recently approached, yeah, like women who lead, you know, so like a group like that. So there's different, um, but I know it's not specific to job club, right? But it might be in more of a networking opportunity to expand and meet people in different industries. So trying to think of what professional associations or groups if there's not job clubs available, what are other um, ways that you can engage with people to learn, continue to learn and grow and, 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 and kind of build relationships in your industry is what comes to mind. But, so I don't have the exact answer, I think there. I think it's a really good question. I'd have to do some more, more research. Mm. Let's see, and then we do have a couple more questions I'm trying to pick. Uh, what platform do you use for staying connected to your alumni and for employers to post student uh, slash alumni job opportunities? Yeah, so we have um, at Cal State Long Beach, we have Career Link. Um, and so through the Career Center website, um, careers.csulb.edu, um, there's an employer page there. And that's where job postings um, would go up for employers to, um, to post any opportunities that they have for current students and then alum um, as well. And then the other question, Alana, was, um, oh, the beach, it was at Beach Nexus about networking. Yeah, yeah, just what platform do you use for staying connected to your alumni and for employers to post student to job? So yeah, I think uh, Beach Nexus would be the other one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so Beach Nexus will be a, a place for alumni to connect with other alums and network um, there. All right, we have a couple minutes. Um, I had another question uh, from someone. Uh, what was life-changing about your experience in South Korea? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a big question. Um, think, you have one minute. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ten seconds. Um, you know, I think just to um, live in another country, to meet people that, you know, it, it's just, it was such a challenge, right, to, to go. So I've never been there before. Um, I, I just really believe that you learn so much, you know, from other people and that um, traveling abroad is, is really a, a great way to do that. And to be able to not only travel, but work there, um, you see so many um, different, you know, pieces of the, of the culture and just how they look at life um, in different countries. And I, it was just, again, it's that whole learning piece, right? There was so much to learn and take in every day um, and, and challenging myself out of my comfort zone to go there right after undergrad um, will just be, you know, something that, you know, I will always cherish. Um, it, and it was very difficult for me, you know, but I, I'm so glad I, I had that opportunity um, to do and I and highly um, encourage it for those that are able to. Yeah, definitely. I feel like anytime I hear from someone who got to travel abroad during their studies, like it's, it's never like something, oh, I regret that. It's always, it's always been like this amazing experience. So yeah, and it's, it's kind of like, you don't know what you don't know. Like, I, I can't yeah. even, it's so hard to put into words, but as soon as you, you have an experience like that, it's remarkable. 
For sure. All right. Well, I think we're at time. Um, uh, thank you all so much for all of your questions and for being really engaging. Uh, if you want to um, connect with Aaron, are you okay if they find you on LinkedIn or if we like forward the, your email to people who ask or anything like that? Yeah, no, I'm open to all of that. Okay, okay great. Yes, you're welcome to uh, email us at alumni at csulb.edu um, for any questions if, you, if anything comes up that you'd like answered. Um, and we thank you again so much. Uh, and Aaron, thank you for taking your time today and for your wonderful presentation and sharing all your words of wisdom. And I'm gonna uh, give it back to Noemi to close this out. Thank you, Lana. Thank you, Aaron, for a great conversation. A lot of good topics that people could um, build upon. I love that energy concept. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, again, like Alana said, follow us on social media to hear about programs like this in the future and um, visit our website to learn about um, other events coming up. Thank you for your time. <laughs>